one of the bucks from last year that we wanted to let grow one more year. He finally made it. He didn't get taken last season. We had our trail camera in BB Squared right on the edge of that marsh all spring and summer long watching that deer grow. Uh, we haven't sat in the whitetail blind yet. Dean says he's got a spot for us to sit tonight. We'll go see if Bailey can get a look at one of them bucks there tonight. So. In the deer woods, you get out what you put in. Whether a weekend warrior or a year-long fanatic, in the end, you'll earn every inch. For us, that's a 365-day-a-year grind, scouting, setting up, making it a lifestyle. There's no words that can describe what deer hunting means to some, but a picture is worth a thousand words. And now, for nearly a decade and over 100 episodes, we've shared what it means to us in film. And more importantly, we've had the opportunity to watch, hunt, and just enjoy some of the biggest and oldest deer they call the Whitetail Woods home. This is Season 8. Partridge's Canadian Whitetail is proudly brought to you by Ozonix, undetectable, undeniable. Elite Archery, the world's most shootable bow. Stealth Cam, proven reliability, proven quality, proven performance. Excalibur Crossbow, the most trusted crossbows on the planet. Big and J Long Range Attractants, the aroma is super strong, the range is super long. Nocturnal Lighted Knocks, switch on accuracy. The Heater Bodysuit, Number one in cold weather hunting gear. Hoyman, your land, your legacy. Black Eagle Arrows, superior carbon technology. Central Boiler, outdoor wood furnaces, performance and value by design. The Whitetail Institute of North America. Under Armour, go where you don't belong. And by Limb Saver, products that work. As all of our kids get older, it's been so enjoyable to watch them start to hunt. And as the oldest, Jason's daughter Bailey has given the rest of the kids not only something to look forward to, but someone to look up to. And that's exactly what we're doing this week. Going on a hunt with Miss Bailey for her biggest whitetail to date. Last fall, Bailey made us all so proud. None more so than her father Jason running the camera by making a great shot and landing one gorgeous whitetail. Now this fall, the task was to find Bailey another deer to hunt. Well, it's nine days before season and we came onto this property to get a tree stand set up. And it's an exciting tree stand because we've actually had permission to hunt this property for many years now, but it's a high pressure area and we've yet to have a deer make it to maturity, but this is the year. One of the bucks from last year that we wanted to let grow one more year, he finally made it. He didn't get taken last season and uh, he looks pretty cool. He's got a nice frame on him and a big non-typical tine on the, underneath his brow tine. We came in, we got everything set up. We had to clear a shooting lane out here quite a bit, but we got it cleared out. We used most of that brush that we cleared out to hang up behind the stand to give us a little bit of background cover so when you draw your bow or you move the camera, that movement's not gonna stick out to the deer. So this is a really unique spot. There's a big cattail marsh to the, to the east here and it's dry. So the deer are using that. As far as the deer are concerned, that's just like big timber. They're bedding out there and traveling through there. There's a trail system. And then from the marsh, there's a channel going straight north from the stand. There's also a channel going straight west. And th what those deer do is they come out of the bigger block of timber and they come down that channel and they travel these channels and then straight out to the southwest where the agricultural fields are. We had our trail camera in BB Squared right on the edge of that marsh all spring and summer long watching that deer grow. So now that everything's ready, we're gonna move in here. We're gonna put our trail camera up. There's no real trees close enough, so we're gonna have to put the trail camera on a T-post. We'll get it set up and we'll get some deadly dust out. So we're really excited. It's a spot we really wanted to hunt for a while. We got the tree stand set up and hopefully in nine days we'll be able to get in here to have a look at that buck. After setting up and checking the stealth cab, the buck was right there, not missing a beat. Now in Hardhorn, and all we needed was young Bailey. 
This segment has been brought to you by Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. A Central Boiler easily connects to your existing forced air, in-floor radiant, baseboard, or dual heat system to heat your entire home in domestic water. Central Boiler, performance and value by design. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Slick Trick Broadheads and Dual Game Calls. Glendale, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe. Bog Pod, more than just a shooting rest. Raculator, score your trophy fast, easy, and accurate. And by Scott Archery and Custom Bow Equipment. This segment has been brought to you by the Heater Body Suit. The Heater Body Suit is the ultimate cold weather hunting garment that allows you to stay on stand longer and sit comfortably. The Heater Body Suit, you stay warm or your money back. While we were busy setting up, Bailey had been busy herself, practicing all summer long, doing her part to ensure a good shot, if given the chance. I think that'll work, AB. Hey, yep. Hunt or what? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Day one was here for Bailey, and anxiously she packs up to head into the stand. I just got in the stand here. We think that they're bedding to the west. They got a northeast, northwest wind blowing out to the open behind us. But uh, there's a channel that runs right out here. Got some big and J in it and some bees down. So with that, what we're trying to do is when we're trying to get them to stage up here early before they go out to the fields to eat. As we do with every, or Dean does with every setup. Like, so Dean's hunted this spot since he was a little, little gaffer. And uh, they moved it around a few times. Hopefully this is the spot. They've killed some deer here before, but it's been a few years. Let's just hunger and see what happens. Day one was a windy start to Bailey's hunt, but we don't call her lucky for no reason. And there was a lot of evening left. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate, learn, set up, hunt. Brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. This week's scouting segment is a little bit of an odd topic. It's kind of about positioning that deer for a good shot when you have the ability to somewhat control the situation. Where it's legal and in spots where you choose to hunt directly over an attractant like we are here, being able to position that deer broadside for a shot can make a big difference. Here we've got our blind on the north. We just put out our attractant and on the far side of that attractant we're going to lay a log that sticks up a little bit across where we have that attractant. We'll then put our attractant out in front of that log and leave the area. You don't need a giant barricade, just a log, just a small obstruction. What happens when that deer approaches that attractant, he's going to naturally feed into it or broadside from it. The last thing that deer is going to do is try to stand over and straddle this log to eat, which will give you a quarter towards shot, which you don't want. So by putting this small obstruction here, the deer's gonna avoid it, and he's gonna stand this way, or broadside. And that's gonna give you your best shot opportunity, and that's what we're looking for. We're always looking for that shot opportunity that gives us our best chance at a quick, clean, ethical kill. And using that log when you're gonna hunt right over an attraction can really help you do that nearly every time. And that's your Canadian Whitetail scouting segment for the week. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. This segment has been brought to you by Glendale, the only 3D target with a replaceable four-sided core. And now you can get 15% off all items by entering promo code WHITETAIL15 at Faradine.com. Glendale, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe.
back in the tree with Bailey on day one of her hunt, and the deer began to move, with these two young bucks being the first. Hearing something in the wind spooks this young fellow, but early enough in the evening that it shouldn't bother anything and Bailey continues to wait it out. Bailey's patient pays off as the evening wears on. Bailey spots a bigger buck. And there, from the cattail flat, appears Bailey's target buck. Bailey's patients are still being tested and put to good use, waiting for what seems like ages for a chance at a good shot. And Bailey is ready as the buck steps out broadside at 22 yards. Whitetail Insights, brought to you by the Quality Deer Management Association, ensuring the future of whitetail deer. When we were talking last night, you were mentioning that the new report's out and that again, in North America, hunter numbers seem to be decreasing. Every five years, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service does a huge annual survey. One of the disturbing things in the 2016 report uh, that they just released was that we have lost about two million hunters in the U.S. between 2011 and 2016. And actually now only 5% of the U.S. population is a hunter, and uh, which is the smallest percentage of hunters that we've ever had. So uh, fortunately, the, the majority of, of adults support hunting. About three quarters of the folks in the U.S. support legal, regulated hunting, which is a very good thing. With hunter numbers decreasing, that's obviously a big topic that needs to be addressed and looked into. But out of that, there were two positives that came up that you talked about, and one of those was that, the, that it's increasing, the public's perception of hunters has never been better than it is right now. That's right, and that's very important because obviously with such a small percentage of people hunting, you know, we don't get to do anything in North America because you know five or six percent of us do it. You know, it's the majority of the non-hunting public that looks at hunters as a, as a service to society and you know, and as more ethical and you know, and regulated hunting as a good service. They're using the meat, they're consuming that. So uh, that's what allows us to continue to hunt. So it's very good that hunters today are probably more knowledgeable than ever before. Yeah, and I, I fully believe that as important as having hunters in the field, it's how those hunters are perceived by the non-hunting public. Because that non-hunting public is always going to be the majority. You know, even if we get hunter numbers up, the non-hunting public is still going to be the majority. And what those hunters are doing in the field, that's also changing, you know, and we've noticed that locally where we hunt, the, the, amount, of, the amount of attitude that has shifted towards land management and being a good steward of the land, it is growing at an exponential rate. You know, the, the, the hunter numbers have slowly slid down, but those hunters that are in the field, what they're doing for the deer, what they're doing on the properties they hunt, that has skyrocketed from what we've seen locally here, and I'm sure you're seeing the same thing in the States. And we, we did a national survey last year in the United States. Every state wildlife agency you know, asked them, you know, how many days does the average deer hunter hunt in your area? And nationally came out to 13 days a year. We then did a QDMA survey and said, hey, how many days do you deer hunt? So the average QDMA member hunted deer 29 days a year last year. So more than double, which means they're a field longer. But even more importantly, we asked them, how many days outside of hunting season do you do other things like improving habitat, you know, monitoring the deer herd, doing all those other non-related or non-hunting related things. 
So they, they hunted more than twice as much as the average person, 29 days a year, and they spent 31 days a year on other land management activities, which is, you are exactly right, they're doing more for wildlife to help deer and all other wildlife species. So that's great for conservation and that's really good for the public image. This Whitetail Insight is brought to you by the Quality Deer Management Association. Become a member and ensure the future of whitetail deer. This segment has been brought to you by Bog Pod. More than just a shooting rest. Bog Pod. Prepare for the unknown. Well, we give them, as you can see, it's dark. We give them a boat. Half hour. Yeah. Dean's actually on his way, but she shot that deer. He swung around and headed back that way. We looked at the footage. She, she thought it was a little bit high to start with, and it might have been, but it's angling down. And on the footage when he ran away, you could see great penetration, and I don't think he's gonna be very far, but. And when he come in, I felt Bailey's knee on my leg just shaking, so that's what hunting, that's what hunting right there is all about. And I remember when I was her age, shooting deer, everything else with bow and arrows, and pretty cool, so. Like I say, we give them some time. It's cold. I don't know whether your knee was shaking because you were cold or... It's probably the adrenaline going. I think so, probably. Hey? <laughs> well, here's the scoop. We, uh, we, we, the, the shot looked high, but uh, there was no exit. So Steve actually found Bailey's deer here. Better hurry up. <laughs> you better hurry up. <laughs> Oh yeah, the shot's good. <laughs> oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> Congratulations, Bailey. He's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Is he ever a pretty Thank deer, eh? Hey? <laughs> nice deer. He broke that big non-typical tine off there, but I don't think Bailey cared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a cool deer, and you made a good shot on him too, hey? Mm-hmm. You go very far. That's what we like. Good shots and not go very far. And I'm trying to think, I think the first week we found this deer was maybe, it might have been even the first week of June. And he was growing that non-typical brow tine and then in August we seen him. And we thought there might be a little girl <laughs> <laughs> who might think that's a pretty gnarly buck. And it's, he's a little bit bigger than your deer last year. Yeah. And that non-typical, those gnarly brow tines are kind of cool. And it's October first, first today, yeah. <laughs> So we actually, the season opened on the 15th, but there's been ringette and volleyball and trying to line up things with your dad. But tonight you got out here and, well, Steve and I didn't think it was gonna take too long, hey? We didn't know. <laughs> well, no, just by, just by the way that he was sh showing up on yeah. the trail camera, we figured it would be over, over pretty quick. We left and Steve said, well, where are we gonna go sit? And I said, I think we're just, I think we're just gonna wait at the end of the road here for, for a little while because he was coming through there a lot. And they were feeding straight, they're feeding straight to the Southeast and uh, actually kind of limited time because once late October comes, the spot pretty dies off pretty quick when they quit heading out to that egg, but that's pretty cool that you got in here and you got a shot at him because he's a beautiful deer. What do you say, B? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Another one for the wall, girl. <laughs> Way bigger than my third deer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way bigger than most people's third deer. And you know, I mean, I, I'm just behind the camera here as a cameraman, but I truly, like as a father, I really, really gotta thank Steve and Dean. I mean, they, I, I, I mean, I, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off in Alaska and everywhere else. And, you know, it was, if it wasn't for these guys, you know, my kids wouldn't experience stuff like this. So thanks boys, appreciate it. We've said it a million times before, but to see them kids, it doesn't matter whether it's our kids or the neighbor's kids or some kids at a trade show do well in the hunting stuff, there's nothing like it. I am so grateful that we have Bailey as a role model to the younger kids to show them how much fun hunting and the outdoors can be. And even with a busy schedule full of school, friends, volleyball, ringette and more, that there's always time to spend in the woods as well. 
In the weeks following this hunt, Bailey also took an antelope, a mule deer, and a big bull of moose. Quite an accomplishment for a young girl and her lead impression bow. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail. This segment has been brought to you by Wild Edge and the ultimate climbing system, the Stepladder. Safely design your climb in any tree, anywhere, with the most versatile, lightweight, and compact climbing system, the Stepladder. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors, For exclusive content, follow Dean and the team on Facebook, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at Whitetail Dean. To view all our past and present episodes, as well as new original content, visit our YouTube, Carbon TV, and Waypoint TV channels. For Canadian Whitetail gear and apparel, visit CanadianWhitetailTV.com.